Hey guys, I just want to welcome you all in with a great big air hug. We are so excited that you joined us today and we're going to get right on into worship.
What an amazing time of worship. Even though we are not together physically in this moment, we still want to connect with you. And we have many different platforms that we can do that. You can like us on Facebook. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel, or you can follow us on Instagram. We would like to thank especially each one of you that give. You are making a difference in people's lives and you are enabling us to continue and to upgrade our online worship experience. There are many easy ways to give. You can go on the app, you can go online at mysprings.church, or you can send it in the mail. Seniors, we know this has been a difficult time for you in your senior year, and we want to honor you in a special way. Please enjoy this slideshow, and then we will finish up our sermon series, Not Today, Satan. Well, good morning, church family. We are glad to have you in our home again for Church at Home. And here online, we are so glad that you have joined us. It won't be long now before we are gathering together again. So hang out to the end of this message, and we'll tell you a little bit more details about that. 
Uh, next week, we're going to be starting a new series called Forward, looking into how we move forward from where we are right now. But this week, we're finishing up the series, Not Today, Satan. And it has been a series where we've been exposing, exposing the devil and equipping believers to fight this battle that they're in. And today, I want to talk about a subject that may be a little controversial. People may not get it the, all the way, but hopefully um, it gives you some good information and some good tactics to, to fight this battle with. Um, if you got your Bibles, you can turn to Ephesians chapter 6. You can click to Ephesians chapter 6. I heard one person say you can turn on your iPhone, your iPad, or look with your eyelids. I thought that was pretty good. So you can do that. We just want you to look today at God's Word because I want to preach God's words. And again, I just want to shout out to our campuses. Shout out to Collins. Shout out to Columbia. Shout out to Summerall. We're going to see you real, real soon. Uh, while you're there, uh, getting, to, getting there in the Word of God, or you can go to the, your message notes on the app. They're there for you. You know, probably all of us has had this uh, happen, or we've heard a story, something like this, that maybe there is a child, a young girl, young boy, that maybe got lost, and in the midst of that lost, a stranger found them in the woods and led them out of the woods to a home, and they were rescued, and nobody could see the person that led them out of the woods, but the person they swore was there. Or maybe I heard this one through the tornadoes that we went through, that one child said that there was a man covering her, and no one could see that man. You know, we've all heard stories similar to that or even on the opposite end of a child getting scared because they feel like something's upstairs or you walk into a place when there's an oppression, maybe a heaviness on your chest or you feel like something or you see a light or something like that. And you can call it paranormal. You can call it supernatural. But the Bible calls it spiritual. And there is a very real, the Bible calls it heavenly realm over and over in Ephesians, it calls it that, of us dealing with the spiritual. Now, I think there's two mistakes as we get into this that the church makes and believers make. We either overemphasize the spiritual or we underemphasize the spiritual. First of all, we overemphasize it that there's a demon or there's an angel in every wind that blows. And, oh, every bug crawling along, that's a demon. You know, I failed my test because oh, that old demon. No, the old, no, you probably failed your test because you didn't study. You know, I had that wreck. The devil's just after me. Well, stop texting. You won't have a wreck. The devil ain't got nothing to do with that. So we overemphasize. You see what I'm saying? But then we also make the mistake of underemphasizing and making everything physical when there is a very real spiritual happening. Look at Jesus' life. Jesus was constantly coming into confrontation with different spirits and different demons. Uh, at one point in the wilderness, he confronted Satan or Satan tempted him three separate times. He, he confronted a man in the Gadarenes that had demons. He had a father brought a young boy to him when that demon that was in him made threw him into the fire. And Jesus was constantly uh, uh, dealing with and confronting some type of spiritual war. And the scripture we're going to look at this morning is the Epsilon, the, the most popular, I think the best scripture to look at when it comes to spiritual warfare, and that is in Ephesians chapter 6, beginning in verse 10. Beginning in verse 10. And each word of this is important. So I may stop and pause and kind of geek out on, my, my, on the scriptures a little bit, so hang with me. It says, finally... And why is finally there? You say finally when you're wrapping something up, right? You, 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 most people do. Some people keep talking. But finally, it, it means that Paul's wrapping this thing up. He went, went through the book of Ephesians and he, he's, he's saying, finally, my brethren. And he's not saying everybody. Come on, everybody. You just listen. He's saying, I'm speaking to a specific people. And these people are the followers, the church of Jesus Christ. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Be strong in the Lord. Not government, not education, not science. Be strong in the Lord. And he says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. He's using military terminology here. Notice that. Verse 12. 
For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, against the rulers of the darkness of the age. Notice how he's got this very organized. Against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Verse 13. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. That evil day is the day when all hell breaks loose in your life, when all of it comes at you at once. In that day, and having done all, stand. And he says, stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth. He's going to give us the uh, armor of God now. And having put on the breastplate of righteousness and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, take the shield of faith with which you, which will be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all types of prayers and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to the end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. And we're not going to go over the armor of God. We did a series on that several months ago. You can go back and listen and watch that. But what we're doing today, I hope, is stirring some people up. We're stirring you up to be aware of some things. And your, your spiritual enemy is being exposed today and he is not going to be happy about that because he doesn't come directly at you. He moves in the side. So what I want to do today is I want to come directly to you. I'm going to be very uh, simple but very coarse in some of the things that I say because we need to hear them in this manner. But I want to give you four truths about our spiritual enemy and then I want to give you four strategies in dealing with him. And I'm going to kind of do that, try to do that in a timely fashion so that we can all get this and get through this online. So four truths about your spiritual, the spiritual war that we're in. Four truths. Truth number one is the devil is real. It's very simple, but you need to understand he's very real. Whether you believe in him or not doesn't change the fact that he's real. It says in Revelation chapter 12, that the great dragon was cast out that the serpent of old called the devil and Satan who deceives the whole world, he is cast to the earth and his angels were cast with him. That old dragon, the Bible talks all about the devil. They, it calls him an accuser. It calls him an adversary. It calls him the Antichrist, the beast. It calls him a deceiver, an enemy. The devil is referred to as the evil one, the father of lies, a murderer, the prince of the air, the ruler of the darkness, a tempter, a thief. In Genesis chapter 6, we find he's called Lucifer. And he gets so prideful in himself, he tells himself in Isaiah that I will be like God and I will be like the Most High. And God removes him from heaven and casts him out of heaven. He's a very real spiritual enemy. And he doesn't have a red jumpsuit on. He doesn't have little horns and a pitchfork and a tail. Now, he's nothing like what Hollywood depicts him as. He's not this little guy that hip shops on your shoulder and tries to get you to do bad things. He's a very real enemy. The second truth that I want to share with you is that there is, <clears throat> the war is real. There is a real war. Everything that we see is physical and visible. But for everything that is visible and physical, there is something that is spiritual and invisible. So if we want to deal with something that is physical, we first have to deal with the spiritual. You don't change a tree by looking at its fruit and inspecting the fruit. You dig down into the unseen and deal with the root and that changes the fruit. Same way in life. We change things by dealing with the spiritual versus the physical. Early on in ministry, Nicole and I did puppet ministry. And we had us this little, this little PVC puppet stand. We had this little, little cloth draped down. We had bought us some puppets. We had a CD player. Come on, somebody, punch that thing on. And we would go around and we'd do little puppet shows. 
Lots of fun. We were ministering to some of these little three and four year olds. They had us kind of in the back. We were got our little puppets up there, and we were singing like a, a bluegrass style of Jesus loves me. We had Jesus loves me. This I know. We were we were we, we was getting after it on there. We just, just, the other and all these little three and four year olds was losing their mind. They was ha ha ha. And this one little guy, he crawled back there, and I'm just I'm just getting after it. I'm just getting after it. And I look down, and he's got his head underneath the puppet stage. And we locked eyes. And it was like he was in shock. And I was in shock. And I was like, you weren't supposed to look behind the curtain. And he said, he's looking at me like, you're a liar. You are a liar. You're, you're showing me this. There's something behind. We just had that moment. And, 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 and he looked out and he told the whole three and four year old group, that isn't, that isn't real. There, that's Brother Wes and Nicole behind the curtain. You see, it changes your perspective on the outside when you know what's in the in behind the curtain, in the invisible. Does that make sense? So Satan is showing us one thing, but doing another. Oh, don't let it fool you of what this physical looks like, because there is a very spiritual happening in that. Let me listen to me. If you could see what's going on in the invisible, it would change the way you perceive the visible. If you could truly see what's happening in the spiritual, it would change the way you act in the physical. It would. There's a very spiritual war, and this war is against darkness and light, against good and evil, against the Christ and the Antichrist. It is a very real war, and to the winner of this war goes our children. To the winner of this war goes our grandchildren. To the winner of this war goes generations to come. So it is very imperative that you and I know that this war is real, and we're not tricked by the facade of the physical. We're fighting in the spiritual, y'all. Listen, why, why, what's wrong with this world? Why is this world so messed up? Why is, why is the moral rot and decay happening in this world? Is it because we're not educated enough? Is it because we don't have good enough laws? I'm telling you, it is spiritual. Why would a guy climb up into a hotel room in Las Vegas, open the window and open fire on, uh, on concert goers and massacre people? Why would somebody walk into a, a temple, a Jewish synagogue and open fire on innocent people? The, the psycho people would say, well, that person wasn't raised right and their mom and daddy put the wrong type diapers on them and they had some problems. The legalistic people would say, hey, they need stricter gun laws. But I would say to you that he is controlled by a demon and that demon had its full spray on them and that spiritual manifested itself into the physical. How, how, how in the world are we having young men and young women who are confused about their gender? How is it that we, they can't make up their mind which gender that they are? In the physical, it seems like a real problem. But my friends, it is a spiritual problem that is confusing them. When we began, we began not standing for a traditional family values and we began to accept untraditional family values, then the confusion started and it is a spiritual issue. Are you hearing me today? I may not be getting votes on earth, but I'm getting votes in heaven because you're telling the truth of God. God. Why in the world, how in the world can an abortion clinic continue to, 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 to function? How in the world can the pornographic industry continue to grow? It is not has anything to do with the physical. It has something, everything to do with the spiritual. My heart right now breaks for those who are in depression, those who are, 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 are suicidal or have committed suicide. Over the past several weeks, we've had a number of pastors in our line of work who've taken their life and it breaks my heart by that. And we see this physical and it breaks our heart. But there's a very spiritual side to that. Now, let me say very coarsely and very honestly to you that I believe medication is necessary and I am pro medication to get you to a point where you can get your head above water and fight for yourself. I believe that it is necessary but there is, and there is a very real mental illness. And I think we need to take very seriously mental illness and we need to treat it as an illness as such. But we cannot ignore the spiritual issues and the demonic presence on people that, that are causing this disarray, that are causing so much. 
I'm going long on this one, but I think somebody needs to hear it. That, that we are not fighting a battle of flesh and blood. We're fighting a battle of spiritual powers. The third truth. Hang with me. Hang with me. There's a real enemy. There's a real war and there's a real strategy. There's a very real strategy. Let me explain it this way. The devil's got a whiteboard and he, know, he knows everything about you. He's got written on it. He knows what you like. He knows what you dislike. He knows what tempts you. He knows when it tempts you. And he has a strategy to get you. The first, one of the main strategies is he functions by weapons of mass distraction. Mass distraction. If he can get your mind off of things that mean something, on, to th- all, on things that don't mean anything, he's got you. Again, I may not be making a lot of friends, but that's, I, that's one of the reasons I'm so thankful that some of the sports world shut down. It's because sports is a meaningless distraction. Do I love a good ball game? Yes, I do. Do I like to watch them kick off? Do I like to watch them shoot? Yes, I do. But is it a distraction? Oh, yes, it is. Does it have meaning in eternity? Maybe in some instances you could argue, but my friends, it is a distraction. The devil, if he can't make you bad, he's going to distract you. He also sets snares and traps for you. He wants to addict you. He wants to get you into this thing. He wants to destroy you. The Bible says, I'm going to move forward. The Bible says your adversary walks around like a roaring lion. Let me tell you something about a lion. When they get ready to attack, they look for the most unhealthy, isolated animal in the herd. And that's who they attack. My friends, listen to me. It is very important that you stay healthy and in community. Because when you get outside of that, we become vulnerable to this enemy's attack. The last truth I want to share with you is is there is a real army. There's a real devil, there's a real war, there's a real strategy, but there's also a real army. And the demons are Satan's army. They carry out all that he wants done. They are a spiritual mafia, if you will. In Genesis chapter 6, Satan, again, was cast out of heaven and he convinced a third of the angels to leave with him. Those angels in in chapter 6 of Genesis were called the sons of God. The sons of God saw the daughters of men, the Bible says, and they they married the, the daughters of men and those produced an offspring called the Nephilim people. And the Nephilim people were giant people. They were a subhuman group. Why, why you want to watch Netflix? You need to read your Bible. That's good stuff. <laughs> and these are very real, very tangible things that the devil does. And these demons are his army. In Ephesians, it refers to them as a highly organized um, group. And they influence, listen, this is what demons do. Demons influence the leaders of nations. They're after leadership. They inflict suffering. They lure you away from God and they paralyze you in fear. Those are four truths about spiritual warfare. Now I want to do my best to give you four strategies of how to fight this war. Now let me say first of all, you need to understand this. That God and Satan are not in this Star Wars Jedi type battle. And they're all, whoom, whoom. they're not doing that. It's not some two hour saga of good facing evil. The Bible says that it, it will happen like a bolt of lightning. That's how long the battle's gonna last. When the Lord decides to come, it's over. So it's not some great climactic battle. The Lord's in complete control. But you and I have to learn how to fight this battle while we're here. So, four. Strategies in the battle. Number one, call on the name of Jesus. Call on the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. In Scripture, it says in Luke chapter 10, verse 17, when the 70 returned, they told Jesus, they said, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. There is tremendous power. See, When we say the name of Jesus, it's an authoritative term to the demonic and they recognize that they are still subject to Him and they do not have dominion over you. We speak that name. When I was a youth pastor, we had a guy in um, the police force uh, and he said, hey Wes, I want you to ride with me one night 
just hang out with me, stay in the squad car. You don't have to get out. So I did. And so I rode around with him. And you know, I noticed that when he pulled by somebody, they automatically kind of looked over and they looked back. and they went. It was kind of this, this authority type thing. And then when we turned them lights on, whoo, it was on. People slowed down. They pulled off the side of the road. Then we turned the siren on and it, we, we, just, we could go anywhere we wanted to when the siren and the lights were on. Now, it wasn't because people were afraid of the color blue or the sound of the sirens. It was authority. That that symbolized authority and people had respect for that authority. As long as you stay silent and you just sit there, the demons are going to say, well, I'm not afraid of that. But the moment we say Jesus, the moments we say Christ, they begin to say, oh, there's an authority that we weren't aware of, that we're, remi- we're being reminded of, that we need to take hold of. Are you, are you hearing me today? Are you hearing me today? I'm tell- I use it all the time. I, I, I say, I don't like the dark. Anybody with me? Come on, get a, can I get an amen? I don't like, I, when I built this house, I, I put lights all the way around it so I ain't got to go outside in the dark. It's not necessarily I'm afraid of the dark. I'm afraid what's in the dark. That's what I'm afraid of. And I'm really not afraid of what's in the dark. I'm afraid of death because it's going to kill me. That's what I'm afraid of. And I really hate being in the dark in church. Like I was doing missions one time and they put me up in the top of a church, staying in a church at night, there's some, thing, there's some weird things go on in a church at night. And I just, I just stood up there and said, Jesus, 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 uh, over until I just fell asleep. I wasn't going to hang out. It got real. I can go into our church right now at night. I'm, I'm going I'm to call on the name of Jesus because at that name, demons come to attention. I wrote down a few of the names of Jesus. Jesus, the mighty one, the bread of life. He's the cornerstone. He's a deliverer, the lamb of God, the Lord of lords, the light of the world, Messiah, mediator. His name is Jesus Christ. He is the son of the living God. Call on the name of Jesus. The second thing, second strategy, stand on the word of God. When Jesus was tempted by Satan in the wilderness... He didn't pull out his wand and do a little Merlin, bippity-boppity-boo. He said, the Word of God says, man shall not live by bread alone. He quoted the Word. And my friends, if if there is a issue in a believer's life today, is they know everything around them but the Word of God. Let it sink in for a minute. They they know the, the lyrics to the latest song. They know what time the show comes on the television. They know what their friend is saying on Facebook because they're responding back to them, but they do not know the Word of God. And if you don't know the Word of God, it's like running into battle with an empty gun. You just, you're, you're not any, if you're holding a gun at me, at me, and I know it ain't loaded, I'm not going to be afraid. We've got to know the Word of God because it is our sword. It is our sword. See, I wrote this down. Sin will keep you from this book, and this book will keep you from sin. Whew, that's pretty good, isn't it? Tell, we must commit our life to writing the Word of God on our heart. I hope somebody is listening to me right now. When you're anxious, know the Word of God, that be anxious for nothing, in a Philippian says, but in everything, with prayer and supplications, make your requests known to God. When you're confused, Proverbs says, trust in the Lord with all of your heart, lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge Him. When you're afraid, 2 Timothy says, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. When you're lusting after things, when you're when you're, you've got this up in you, say, I have made a covenant, like Job says, with my eyes that I will not look at any unwholesome thing. When it, we need healing, we, we say that he was crushed for our iniquities, that he was bruised, he was his, by his stripes, we are made healed. When you're uncertain about things, I walk in faith, quote the word of God, because the word of God brings certainty into our life. It is a strategy for war. And the last thing, stay with me, stay with me, is... Is, is, and I'm going to put these together. Prayer and fasting in faith. Now fasting, these are our spiritual superpowers as Christians. That fasting is a way that creates an, it creates an environment for the Spirit of God to move. It, it creates an environment where 
God can release His power. I've seen people in fasting experience breakthroughs. I've seen spirit, people in fasting experience miracles and things they never thought could happen because it creates an environment. When we go fishing down at the pond, there is a boat that is turned bottom upwards. We turn that boat bottom upwards because if you leave it straight upwards, the rain will come in and it'll fill it up. So we turn it bottom upwards and we leave it that way. But when we go back down to the pond, if we're going to use the boat, what do we have to do? We have to flip the boat over. Well, every time you flip the boat over, y'all know what happens. Something crawls out from under it. Something waddles out from under it. Or worst of all, something slithers out from under it. You know, it's interesting that I've never had to put up a sign or put a message out that says, hey, all snakes, y'all just get under there. Why do they get under there? Because it's an environment. The environment created was created for them to get under there. We, some, you want to know why Satan is so active in your life? Could it be because you're creating an environment where he feels comfortable? Could we create an environment by prayer and fasting where the, angel, the Spirit of God is comfortable and He can be released in our lives because we're saying to the Lord, I desire you more than I desire food. I desire you more than I desire Netflix. I desire you more than I desire Facebook. I desire you more than I desire the things of this world and I will put my life on hold for that as we pray. Fast, God releases those things. Then, this is getting good. I don't know if you're still with me, but you need to stop right here because prayer is another thing where God is, going, is doing incredible, incredible things. And prayer has more power than you ever thought it did. Well, some people say, all I can do now is pray, preacher. All I can do now is pray. My goodness, my goodness. You need to make prayer your first response, not your last resort. Prayer has the potential to change the trajectory of your life when we pray and fast in the Lord. Listen to this. I may not even need to open this can of worms right now because we're kind of winding this thing down. But, but in Daniel, Daniel's praying to the Lord. And, 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 in, and in Daniel chapter 10, I believe it's in verse 12 or 13, the angel comes to Daniel and the angel tells him that I've been trying to get to you for 21 days. But there was a demon that was, call me crazy if you want to. There was a demon keeping me away for 21 days. But when you prayed, the demon was removed. I had the strength to overpower him. And I came to you so that we could have the breakthrough that's happening in your life. I'm telling you, when you pray, it is not just words going into the air. It is going to the Father. And the Father hears that. And we need to call out to the Lord in prayer and fasting. And it helps us to break the stronghold of the spiritual battle. We need to man up, woman up, spiritualize ourselves, and bow up and fight this battle. Let's not lay down. This is a word for somebody that doesn't want to get out of the bed. This is a word for somebody that has thought about ways to take your own life. This is the word for somebody that has thought about walking out on their spouse and going to someone else. This is a word for somebody that's in a group that can't get out of this group and this group is leading them straight to a path of hell. This is a word for somebody that says there is no hope for me, but I'm calling out to you from this screen, from this little platform that there is hope for you and this war is not over. Stand up. Stand your ground and fight this battle like a man. Fight this battle like a woman and we will stand with you to the end. We do not fight with the weapons of this world. We fight with the weapons that are spiritual. We fight with the weapons that are powerful. We We fight with the strength of Almighty God and I call that strength down on you right now in this place. Here's the way I want to end this message. I want to pray over you right now in your home. Drive Driving down a car, in your car, driving in the kitchen, or not driving in the kitchen, that would be weird, but in the kitchen, you know what I'm saying. I just feel the Spirit of God right now moving in this place, moving in this video. Right now where you're at, I want to pray over you. So let's bow our heads together. We're going we're gonna to pray right here in my home, and this is going to be manifest out to where you are right now. We're going to pray this prayer. We're going to pray a prayer. 
right now over you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift up the prayers and we we lift up this prayer to each and every person that's listening. I feel the Spirit of God moving on somebody right now. Somebody, Lord, that's going through something that is so heavy, that is so dark, that is so evil. There's a spirit on them. There's a spirit of deception on them. There's a spirit of lies on them. I speak the truth over them that God, you are for them. You are not against them. Lord, you, there is a way, Heavenly Father. I pray, Heavenly Father, over every home right now that's represented, that's listening right now. I pray your spirit be in that home. I bind the enemy in that home. And I pray, Heavenly Father, that you would do what only you could do, that your presence would be manifest and there would be peace and love in that home. I pray over every marriage, Lord, for those that are thinking about throwing the throwing the, in the towel and quitting. I pray, Father, for a spirit of, of humbleness. I pray, Lord, that they would forgive and they would begin to work on their marriage. Lord, I pray for the state of Mississippi. I pray that this state would rise up and be everything that you called it to be. Heavenly Father, I pray, Lord, that it would be a beacon of light in this nation, greater than New York, greater than California, greater than Texas, that this little state that everybody calls the poorest and the most impoverished and the least educated would rise up and be the one most spirit-filled to see where we can see you, Heavenly Father. I pray, Heavenly Father, Lord, for this Pine Belt area. I pray for Covington County. I pray for Lamar County. I pray for Marion County. I pray, Heavenly Father, that they would be a spiritual center, Lord, for an awakening for you right now. Lord Jesus, I pray that. I pray it in the name of Jesus and I speak to the enemy and I say to him, you are not a winner. You are already a loser. We don't fight for victory. We fight from it and the battle lasts that long. It's over. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. As we continue to pray, stay right where you're at. Some of you need to give your heart to Jesus right now. If that's you, right now you feel compelled to just turn it all over to Him. Right now, would you say, Heavenly Father, I give my life to You. Right now, I submit everything that I have to You. And I ask You to forgive me of my sins. I commit my life to You right now in the name of Jesus. Now tell Him this. If you're praying with me, mean this with everything in You. Say, Lord Jesus, thank You for saving me and rescuing me from the enemy. And thank you for making me yours. I pray it in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for listening to today and watching us. And I pray that it has been a blessing to you.
Thank you for watching today and pray that it was a blessing to you. If you made a decision today, we would love to hear from you. You can email us or direct message us. However, we'd love to hear from you and encourage you. We do have some exciting, exciting news coming that we are going to be regathering on June the 7th at all of our campuses. But before we do, you need to know kind of how that's going to look. And so if you would, go to our website, mysprings.church. And on that website, you'll find all of the details of what that's going to look like as we regather together. It's going to be a little different. It's going to be a little challenging. But we encourage you to check that out and, and join with us. Now, we're going to continue to do our online services. So as we begin to regather, we'll still be here at 10 o'clock every Sunday. For those of you who are high risk or are not there ready to gather again, we're still going to be here. So don't think this is going to change. But we are excited um, to be doing that. Um, we are so excited to that this ministry is, is making such an impact. We want to say thank you for all of you who give, all of you who are doing. I got an email this past week about someone who watched our our uh, stream online and gave their life to Jesus and we just give him all the praise and all the honor for that. We love you. We're celebrating with you. We're looking forward to seeing you and we'll see you soon.